Mr. President, a second e-girl has hit the towers. Let's fucking go! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby! Yeah. Okay, Woo! I think I'm a zoomer. I think I'm a zoomer. I think I'm a zoomer. Damn, I'm like a zoomer. Okay. E double. And another e one bites w the dust, my grillers. I T E coming with the heat. I stay fooling with my box. Welcome to, to Catch a Redditor, the only podcast in the world dedicated to catching these Redditors dead in the act of cringe. Uh, today's episode will be yet another deep dive into our drama meta drama. Um, I intend to do my best to explain what the hell is going on to my grillers as we explore the story of Janny Collusion of e-girls gone wild, and of a Rizzler cut down in his prime. Joining us today is a returning guest and Giga Chad, Sir Pings a lot. How are you doing, buddy? Doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, So, you know, this story starts with you being banned from our drama. Uh, can you explain a little bit about what went on there and what led up to that? Yeah, I um, basically accused one of the admins, Carpathian Florist, of being a pedophile. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to establish a couple of story characters here. Uh, so, you know, not everybody who listens to my show goes on our drama, knows the goings-ons uh, of this gay cat dating website. So we have Avan. He's the admigger of our drama, the owner and operator uh, Egyptian royalty, sun worshiper, and overall, I think he's a good guy. You might not agree, but I'm a pro Avan guy, uh, generally. And then we have Carp, who you mentioned. He's, uh, Avan's right hand man, head capo, premier Janny. Uh, and, you know, you allege that he's a pedophile. Um, we'll get into that. And then Frozen Chosen who's really the focus of this episode. Uh, late 30s, e-girl, collector of orbiters and simps, asylum escapee, literally escaped from an insane asylum to predate on our drama users. Now, you say you were banned from the site because you called Carpathian Flores Carp a pedophile. You, why did you do this? Well, a few reasons. First of all, he hangs out on watch people die all the time. And I haven't been on the site much, but I've seen it enough to know that there are a lot of underage users there. And I think that came out shortly after I was banned. Um, people had fat discovered two 14-year-olds and watched people die. So the fact that Carp is always on there and that he personally messages every female user, I mean, it seems pretty sketchy to me, don't you think? <laughs> you know... I, I would personally want a little more proof than that. It To me, it, it does kind of, you know, I do think Watch People Die, uh, a splinter side of our drama, uses the same code as the same owners and operators, a lot of the same jannies, um, and it's a lot bigger than our drama. It's a off-site for the old subreddit Watch People Die, uh, where people go to watch people die like it says you know uh shooting videos posted there gore videos things of that nature and um you know i have always felt a little bit uh weird about them being associated with us because there are a lot of weird people who you know get off to gore who enjoy gore gore enthusiasts um you know we i've seen a lot of gore i've been on the chans and uh, online for long enough to where you know it's something that i've seen i had curiosity about and then you know kind of moved on from it many many years ago uh n never something that i was super into to the point where i'd sign up for a website dedicated to it so you think that you know moderating a forum like that would make you pedo adjacent I i'm trying to figure out why uh why that's how that connects Look, I'm going to break it down for you. Carp is self-admittedly a felon. He has admitted to having committed felonies in the past. He never talks about what they were. We can assume that there's something embarrassing to him that he doesn't want to talk about. Second of all, he's constantly sliding into the DMs of minors, getting very sensitive about minors. It's sort of like, you know, he's so hyper aware of pedophilia and so quick to accuse others that you got to say that there's something underlying it. You know, he, it's like he's deflecting suspicion from himself by constantly accusing others. And we all know that he's constantly messaging these women and he's constantly being sexual. Are you trying to tell me that he's checked the ages 
of every single our drama user or watch people die woman whose DMs he slid into? Of course he hasn't. In fact, he called me a pedo because I suggested age checking. So like, it's clear that whether he's deliberately pedo or accidentally a pedo, the dude is sliding into the DMs of minors and being sketchy. I, I don't do see you, how it could be do more Do you have any that. DM leaks or proof of that just for, uh, or is this, is this speculation? We've, we've seen Carp DM plenty of our drama users. Doesn't he personally introduce each new female user? Like, this is known. <laughs> <laughs> like, where does he get the info from if he's not sliding into their DMs? All right. Well, I'll uh, you know, I'll let I'll let you have that. Um, so, you know, to me it's kind of the it kind of seems like every internet argument boils down to calling each other pedophiles. Like if you break it down to the end of it, both people are going to call each other pedophiles by the end. I think that should be a new rule for the internet, a new uh God, a law. God is law. <laughs> yeah. We'll call it Epstein's law. Epstein's law. <laughs> right. And so, you know, you you messaged the mods and said, I'm being banned because I called Carpathian Florist a pedophile. Yep. Even though he calls me a pedophile all the time. Why is this, uh, you know, allowed? Why? Wh what's the double standard here mm -hmm. is what you're asking. And in this exchange with the Jannies, calling them out for this uh, hypocrisy that you felt, Frozen says you are obsessed with underaged girls. Now, you have a prior history with Frozen that we'll get into momentarily, but why do you think that Frozen snaked you like this? Because I kind of low-key rejected her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so you think that she was hurt by that and she, uh, you know, lashed out in anger. Yeah, I think that she expected me to just try to hook up with her. And when I didn't give her the complimentary response that she wanted, she got upset. Now, in this message exchange, I want my gorillas to pay attention to this and it will be relevant later. You call her out. For having flirted with you in the past at this point, you know, you say, oh, well, you didn't think I was a pedophile back then. And you post these messages and she says, I didn't flirt. I was just attention seeking. <laughs> Did that seem like attention seeking to you? It does seem kind of like a cope. But this isn't the first time that, uh, you know, she's used this cope before. I mean, it, this isn't the first time this has happened. This will be relevant later. So stick that in your noggins and keep it there, my gorillas, because we're about to go on a journey of the DMs between you and Frozen, the second e-girl who has hit the tower. Um, I did ask Frozen to come on the show to answer for her crimes. You know, I said... Look, we're going to be talking about you. I believe in a right to reply and to give someone the chance to clear their good name. And in response, she posted the DM leaks that you sent me to our drama before I could do this. You know, she she wanted to jump out in front of the drama. She wanted to leak it on her terms to take it on the chin, which, you know, to be fair to her, her chin is her most powerful feature. Um... I want to go over some of the aspects of these DM leaks and get some insight from the Rizzler himself. On, I, I want to, you know, get in your head, uh, ask you about some of your techniques to make women drop their e-panties and give you the goods, because it's genuinely impressive what you did here and how you made this work. I, I think you're overselling me a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> nah, man. Um, so in your initial message, you're very classy and gentlemanly. And this is lesson number one for the young bucks out there trying to score some easiness. You got to differentiate yourself, you know? Don't just send a what's up. Don't just send Bob's and Vagine. You need to craft a literary masterpiece to woo your target, like our friend Sir Pings a lot here today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the first message you sent. Sorry, give me a second. You say, hey there, Frozen. Nice to meet you. Please tell me. What brings an attractive pharma rep who seems to have her life together to an online den of degenerate cat worshippers? There's got to be a story here. And so, you know, this is this is where the real move of the maestro occurs. Because about five messages in, you know, you message a little bit back and forth. Uh, you demonstrate value as a man in your hobbies and establishing a shared autism self-diagnosis. You know, both of you self-diagnose as autistic. But you say this to her afterwards. Um, you say, 
She asks if you rock climb, and you say, I used to. In fact, I once broke up with a girlfriend because of rock climbing. She says, ha, what? And you say, I'll tell you the story, but then you have to share a bad relationship story of your own. Deal? Now, Sir Pings a lot, this is what I read as a calculated move. You've locked in, you, you've locked this into relationship talk. You dangle the carrot in front of her to open up about her sexuality and give you an opportunity to push it further. Uh, was that your intention with that message, sir? Yes, but I'd like to place it in some context. Sure. So, I had no idea what Frocho looked like at the time. I was just really curious about her. She was funny. She was on our drama a lot. She was also the mod of Verified Hot, so I assumed she was a hottie. So I figured, yeah, I would I would slide into her DMs and try to raise her. That was my intent initially. I, I totally admit it. Right. And, you know, it is kind of funny, like... Uh... <laughs> I'm 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 not gonna link to where uh her picture was posted or you know anything like that, but you have to kind of wonder like that's who's verifying me as hot or not. That's uh ah uh, I don't know. It, it it seems a little weird to me. I'll, I'll I'll just say that much. Um, I'm not gonna read your story because to me it, it was just a vehicle for you to establish a bond with her. Probably a fake story, you know, just trying to get in there. Whoa, whoa, but, whoa! But... No, no, everything I say <laughs> is genuine. I don't, you know, like I may try to raise on people, but I don't make stuff up whole cloth. All right, all right, I'll uh, I'll, I'll let you have that, uh, my friend. So this is where her story. You know, her story that she shares, that's where it gets interesting. I want to read that, and then I'll give some additional context after. Um, she says, for her story, I was a frog in boiling water with the revelations. It started out, he was like, I'm really into cat girls. And I was like, oh, okay, I can wear ears, whatever, no problem. Even wore a tail. <laughs> you don't want to know how the tail attaches, by the way. <laughs> okay, but then... It turns out he was a furry. Gross. And he kept sending me furry porn, and I was like, eyes emoji? Okay, and then one day he was like, wow, you're so motherly. And it turns out he has a mommy kink. And then, oh, it gets better. And then it turns out he has a pee training kink. Like, he wanted me to be his furry mommy and him to be my furry son, and I'd potty train him. So, you know, I, I asked her about this. I, I reached out to her, and I said, you know, so you were dating like a diaper furry? What's what's going on there? Why did you stick around for it? Uh, were you into it? Was this something that, you know, secretly uh, gave you the tingles? Lady, what's going on here? She says that the diaper furry looking for a dommy mommy was in fact a billionaire. And that's why she stuck it out for so long. Now, does that sound plausible to you, Alex? That she broke up with a billionaire because he was too cringe? Sure, our drama is full of billionaires. Yeah, no. Yeah, they, they often go for uh, power users, as is well known. Well, you know, billionaires often go for late 30s post wall -E thoughts. You know, that that's their type. <laughs> and, you know, beyond that, you know, she claims this guy's a billionaire. So you're telling me that 10 out of 10 20-year-old Instagram models get flown out to Dubai to get shit on by oil barons, but a late 30s woman who looks like Jay Leno's long-lost daughter is going to turn that down? Is that what I'm to believe? I don't know, man. Everyone has a story. Yeah, no, I don't buy it for a second. I'm starting to see with this a pattern of lies. Now, my gorillas... Look to the skies. The truth is out there because it gets better. All right. This is, you know, obviously very embarrassing for her to uh, reveal to the world that she was dating a diaper furry who wanted her to change his diapers and that, you know, she put up with that for so long. But rather than get put off by this, rather than get your brain scrambled, you have a mission. All right. You have a mission to fulfill. You will get this easiness at any cost. And so you pivot at this point perfectly. This is a master class. You say, so what are your kinks? They must be pretty wild if you are willing to indulge him in all this nonsense. <laughs> Masterful pivot, my friend. I, 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 I just want to put this out there. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, you get her to open up. You, you've swapped relationship stories. You've established the fact that, you know, you have value as a man. You've demonstrated value. And within less than an hour, you've brought it home. 
to have her talk about her basic white e-girl kinks of white choking, daddy play, you know, etc. And, uh, you know, as a serial e-girl conqueror, do you have any tips for the gorillas out there who want to escalate to this point? Well, how do you do it? I mean, I was just genuinely interested in getting to know her. And I know it sounds kind of not... I mean, I guess maybe you could take a cynical interpretation that I was just trying to demonstrate value. But, you know, like establishing commonalities and uh, just being curious about someone and asking questions is pretty basic. I mean, if you did it with a guy, it would just be bonding. So I I was just bonding with her and it kind of naturally turned to sex because that's what she was talking about, you know? She brought up the diaper furry, so I figured I'd ask the logical question, like, why did she do it? What dark secrets does she have that she <laughs> she is willing to put up with this? You right. Know? And so, uh, but you did kind of navigate it to that position by initially saying, oh, we'll swap relationship stories, right? Like, this was part of your master plan. You have to admit that. I feel like I wanted her to confide in me more. I I think it's a little cynical to say I was just trying to get into her pants because, like, I didn't even know her at the time. I wasn't even sure if I was interested. We hadn't swapped pictures yet. So, you know, I was just, I was flirting, I guess. That's the best way to say it. I was flirting with her. Well, you did a stand-up job there. Now, I do want to ask you because, you know, she does end up swapping pictures with you. And, um... What did you think when you received these pictures from Frozen Chosen? What was your mindset, you know, before you're interested, you're doing some flirting, trying to get to know her, all this? What did did anything shift after receiving the pictures? What was your mindset uh, when you received those? Well, I was a little disappointed. I mean, it's not like she's she's a cripple. She's not scarred. I mean, she has a nice body, but I just am not into her appearance. Like, her face isn't my type. What about her face put you off? She has a big chin. (laughs) Everyone knows this. I mean, it's not like a secret. Our drama talks about it. You know, she does... You say that she does kind of look like uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. Like she looks like she's about to ask me to stare at a pencil and then slam my head down on the desk. To be fair, so it was at this point that you're like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really into this. You know, you before that, uh, you know, you shared your kinks, you sexed it a little bit. I don't really want to read the bulk of that, but I do want to show a message you received when you were first on the receiving end of these heinous. Okay, heinous pedophile allegations. Uh, She said the following to you. She said, hey, so I saw you're getting flamed and accused of being a pedo. I don't think it's true at all. I completely understand your argument. It's probably them being uncomfortable facing the fact that they have seen underage women they're attracted to. That's a fucking weird thing to say. Well, unwatched uh, people die. They, they're ju- just clear your cookies if you want to make an account and I'll link to your old one. Sorry you're dealing with this kind of accusation. So she's giving you advice on ban evasion. As a moderator of our drama, she's telling you how to break the rules and how to come back, uh, saying she doesn't believe at all that you're a pedophile, and it is, in fact, the people accusing you of being a pedophile who are pedophiles. Um, so, back then, she seemed to believe that you didn't do nothing, that you was a good boy and shit. Uh, what do you think changed between then and now? Well, she realized I wasn't interested in going over there and hooking up with her. So, you know, her loins were all fired up by your rising, and she lost to you, you know? She sent the pictures. Uh, immediately, you start sending, you know, one sentence, one word replies, uncharacteristic of our boy, you know, who weaves a tapestry with our, his words. Okay. And she felt that vibe me. shift. And- I didn't give her the cold shoulder, but yeah, the vibe shifted. I stopped, uh, you know, making things sexual. Right. And obviously, that very much damaged her. Um, And it's, you know, I I find it necessary now to establish the sort of person that Frozen is. Uh, If you remember, she said she was just using you for attention, you know, and this isn't her first foray into prowling our drama for innocent, righteous men to drain like the succubus she is. Oh, really? Um, I want to tell the story now, and this will be new information to you. It'll blow your mind because... You'll say, wow, that's literally me. You know, I I fall into the same uh, slander and lies as this man named, 
Mello. So to introduce uh, what's going on here, Mello was a user who was banned from our drama ages ago, and he was banned for the crime of supposedly stalking and harassing Frozen. This is what was put out to us. That's what we were to believe, that he was evil, that he was an evil man doing this. Um, the Janny Cabal and Frozen would have you believe that he's a dangerous man, a threat to safety, uh, a threat to life, and a threat to democracy itself. But I investigated the matter. Uh, I, I did a Grillcast journalistic investigation. And what I found, it just doesn't quite add up to that. Um, I first heard of this story when a user asked me to look into it. And perhaps do an interview with this mysterious specter haunting the art drama community. And initially, you know, I hear about this. I, and I have little interest. But, you know, if somebody gives me a... Uh, a lead. I, I, I dig into it a little bit, see what's going on, see if there's anything to be had there, any nectar to collect. And what I found, my gorillas, was disturbing, to say the least. Um, I first reach out to Frozen, you know, I, I'm told that he's stalking Frozen, so I say, I'll go straight to the source, uh, ask her for her side of the story, figure out what the hell's going on here. Who was this mysterious stalker? And what were his crimes? What exactly constituted harassment and stalking in her mind? And so I send her a friendly message asking this, and this is the response I was met with. I, I simply asked, tell me about Mello. I'm having him on my show and need the full context so I can question him, and I don't know anything about the situation other than he's stalking you or something. Thanks, Rocho. And she says to me, you might want to reconsider that or get legal counsel as I am getting a stalking no contact order. This includes harassment through third parties. Now, I, an esteemed journalist, ask simple questions about this matter and I'm immediately threatened with legal action. Unbelievable. You know, if, I, if she's simply a stalking victim, why would she try and shut down my questioning with the court of law? Does that make sense to you, Alex? It sounds like she has something to hide. That's what I thought. You know, I heard that. I got that message from her and I said, it goes deeper. I said, look to the skies. The truth is out there. There's something amiss. You know, I felt it in my soul. It's at this point that I was very interested and I intended to pursue, you know, I intended to pursue this story further because I'm not going to be threatened. Okay. I'm not going to be told, you know, I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to ruin your life. I'm going to have your docs put out because there's all these court documents. You know, I'm not going to be threatened by an EFOID or anyone ever. Good. That good doesn't good. work on me. Good okay. Good. That's the right way to do journalism. That's the thing. As a journalist, you have to take it to the bitter end. And that's what I've done here today. Shortly after this, you know, I got into contact with Mello himself, the supposed evil heinous man and i asked him over twitter dms about what had happened about his side of the story and he only wanted to talk about carp and avan uh in fact he specifically told me that he did not want to talk about frozen in any capacity and that he only wished her the best and so to me that sends up more red flags does this sound like stalker schizo behavior a real schizo stalker would use any capacity to reach his target to harass them, uh, to thrust themselves upon their stocky. I mean, that's what stalkers do. You know, they get off on that. Yet he specifically did not want to bother her or mention her. Does that add up to you, Alex? Does that sound like a stalker's behavior? Sounds almost like he's scared of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought to myself. I said, wow, it seems like, you know, he's a little whipped boy in this situation he wants nothing to do with her doesn't want to talk about her you know maybe maybe he sent her some cringe dms and she didn't like it and he's like ah, i'm moving past it you know something like that but an evil schizophrenic stalker i think not and nothing is adding up i can't even supply these dms that i shared with him because he deleted his twitter account and you know why he did this my friend no why because Frozen Chosen served him with a restraining order. 
Wow. A restraining order. You know, a order that takes away your rights. If you have a restraining order, he can no longer own a gun. Uh, it, it'll pop up on background checks. I mean, this fucks the guy's life up. And she does this to him. He immediately deletes fucking everything. And I haven't heard from him since. Uh, and, you know, Frozen... She even provided me proof of this restraining order and boasted about shutting him down for good. She was proud of this. She got off on this. She was happy about having ruined this man's life who didn't even want to talk about her to me. Wow, that's pretty wild. That's fucked up, right? Yeah. It, the, the guy did not come across as a stalker to me. Now, if you're, if you're still blue-pilled, okay, if you're still willing <laughs> to live in a false reality, my gorillas... You, you may think that this is a good thing. A, a victim, a, a poor Efoid victim, keeping herself safe from an evil, dangerous schizo stalker. But what if I established that this is a pattern of behavior from Frozen? What if I established that pattern from earlier? Uh, because in this next screenshot, someone asks a very pertinent question. Why, if he was so evil, did you supply Mello with nudes? Her answer will shock you. I was attention seeking. Is that what she said? Exactly. <laughs> Hard as life asks, why did you give him nudes then? LOL. And she replies, I didn't. I sent a picture in a camisole because I wanted a distraction while going through a breakup and I knew he was into me. Wow. Okay. So here's where we're at. This isn't some guy who was obsessed with her, harassing her, stalking her. You know, trying to do everything he could to get in her good graces. This is a man, okay, who was talking to her, exchanging pictures with her, flirting with each other, and she claims, once again, that it was for attention. This is what she claims. Now, remember, she said she simply used our hero Sir Pinks a lot for attention, only to deride him as a pedo when it was convenient, and she claims to do the exact same thing here. Uh, if he was an evil stalker, you know, this is what I'm asking. Why would you tempt him with your feminine wiles? Why would you shut down my investigation with threats of legal recourse and restraining order? That is really messed up. It is messed up. I mean, to me, I think Mello was an innocent man. Uh, I, I think his story will never be heard because he has been legally buttfucked. Uh, I think that things aren't adding up, that there's a pattern of behavior where one second she'll talk to a guy and use him for attention, and the next second she'll do everything she can to deride him, to denigrate him. Things are not adding up. Look to the skies. The truth is out there, my gorillas. Uh, while, while Sir Pings a lot and Mello can get banned from our drama for pissing off a late 30s post-wall e-girl with a chin that can cut glass, she's allowed to send out restraining orders and threaten legal action against innocent men whose only crime was being bricked up. And she can do this with impunity. She's protected. I feel like our drama is really uh, taking the listen and believe a little too far here. I didn't realize I was on a website full of Me Too feminists who would, you know, parrot these uh, unsubstantiated allegations. Yeah, you know, uh, a wise person once told me, uh, scratch your drama knot and a redditor bleeds. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate to see this happen, to see this kind of behavior protected. I have to ask, you know, uh, she's allowed to do this to ruin men's lives, uh, to serve them with, you know, real legal documents, you know, that hurt them in real life. But you calling Carp, which, you know, I still believe is unsubstantiated. But regardless, you calling Carp a pedophile is some sort of bannable offense. You have to be killed and thrown in the gutter. Is this what I'm to believe? It's just a click. The people at the top think they can get away with anything, and but you can't retaliate. You know, it's just uh, they want to recreate Reddit. They hate Reddit and like they didn't like the mod abuse. And now they've just reenacted it in their own little dramatic way. Right, and you know, it's tough to see it, because I really do love the site, I love the users, but I hate seeing this cabal of evil, you know, of Satanism, really, coming down and, you know, affecting our best users, such as Sir Pings a lot, such as Mello, you know, such as potentially even myself. Let's say a Janny gets a hair up their ass and says, oh, well, now you're harassing and, you know, now Frozen Chosen's gonna sue you for saying that her chin's fucked up and gross. <laughs> Now you have to go to jail and die. That could happen to any of it us. Could. My listeners out there, the R-Drama users, this could be you 
next you know first they banned sir pings a lot and i said nothing because i was not sir pings a lot then they banned mellow and i said nothing because i was not mellow and then they banned me and there was no one left to speak out that's the moral of the story here today fact never trust e-girls never allow them uh, you know, access to your innermost thoughts, desires, because it could be you next, pilloried, put up on the cross, you know, stoned. It, it's just, I don't know, it's demoralizing. But I want to talk a little bit to end this out with, um, you know, your new project that you're launching because you're, it, for those who don't want to fall trapped to this vixen's influence, you've established a new space, a free speech safe, safe space for men. You want a drama post without the looming threat of the eternal mop over their heads. Now, uh, just as a disclaimer, I have been offered your sloppy e-girl seconds in exchange for having you on today. Um, would you like to shill your new project and outline your goals for it today? Uh, are you referring to the R drama Discord? Yes. Just go ahead with that. We'll talk a bit sure. more. Sure. So, um... I initially didn't put up a Discord because I was a mod of my own art drama hole, and I know Avon doesn't like Discord, but since I'm now operating outside of our drama, I decided it might be nice to create a space for people to talk without being bound by all these silly rules. So it's called a Spal Spal's Free Speech Gossip Zone, and it's just a place for people to shit post and sometimes exchange some interesting stories on uh, Discord. So uh, I sent the link out, Ryan, and uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but if you don't mind repeating it, that'd be great. And um, Yeah, I'll put it in the description for the show today. For our gorillas, for, you know, other art drama dissidents, those who are, you know, waking up and seeing the light to join us there. Um, I do have one piece of criticism. I don't I do think that you should call it Spal World instead. <laughs> it's like a pal world, except instead of catching monsters with balls, you catch unsuspecting e-girls to suckle your balls. <laughs> I'd uh, love to do that, but I don't want to get sued for copyright infringement. Ah, oh, come on. But you know what? Well, you know, you know, I have been thinking. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned possibly uh, creating an R drama alternative just by forking the code, and I'd like to say that if enough people from R drama with coding experience were interested in doing that, I'd be happy to use my project management experience to spearhead the project. All right, hell yeah! So you know, a lot of people. Uh... I, I have had actually people reach out and say, maybe we could do a spal.world website and, you know, I could help connect you with those people, all that. It's got to be called spal.world, though. It's got to be. Sounds great. Hell yeah. All right. So we're going to get this project off the ground. I'm going to have no moderation or admin or uh, anything like that capacity on this. I'm not interested in doing that ever, but I will uh, facilitate the construction of this project i will uh send people along to you and try and get this put up because you know it's time that we stand up for ourselves you know it's time that we look at this and we say hey this isn't okay it's not okay that this entire website is revolving around a woman who at any time could serve you with legal papers a woman who at any time could come out and try and have you killed by the federal government for the simple crime of being bricked up. We need a site where the admins aren't any better than the users. They all think they're better. And that's the thing. It's gone to their head, this power. And the mop always does. The mop always goes to their head. You know, they get Janny brain. They get a uh, cleaning solution in their brain. It's like wet brain, except worse. Uh, this is the inevitable end of every website. And from it, you know, from its ashes can be birthed a new community. One that focuses on free speech. One that focuses on funneling e-girls to Sir Pink's a lot. You know? Uh, a, a good community. A godly community and a holy community. So, we're excited for that. Uh, you know, that, that'll that be in development shortly, I'm sure. In the meantime, we'll have the uh, Discord server. Only good things happen on Discord servers, so make sure to join that. Now, Alex, I want to thank you for coming on today. I've kind of been rambling a lot. Um, I apologize for that. Do you have anything else that you would like to get out there? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, any shade to throw at Frozen Chosen? Sure. 
I'll say this. I never talk about anyone I hook up with unless they lie about me. And it's regrettable that she decided to just publicly spread lies about me because then I could have kept the whole thing secret. She'd never have to know about, I mean, no one would ever have to know that she was into me. No one would ever have to know about the size of her chin. No one would ever have to drag all this <laughs> dirty laundry out in public. And she started this just by spreading lies. So I guess I just want to say I'm sorry that you made me do this. I would have preferred this. You know, you're kind of like John Rambo in uh, Rambo First Blood. <laughs> you know, she drew first blood, not me. You know, thank you. That's a real compliment. I also got to ask uh, one thing of a personal nature. Uh, you know, you've had some pictures fly out there. People are aware of what you look like and what your deal is. I have to ask about the uh, safari getup that you're normally posed in. What is your deal with the safari getup? Why is that your drip of choice? And do you think that that entices the woman? So it wasn't a safari getup. That was... so. You looked like you're about to go on an African bush adventure. It was a safari getup, my so friend. So I go paddle boarding every summer. I rent a cottage in the Berkshires, and I just spend a few months paddle. And uh, it gets pretty sunny out there. You know, I'm a bald guy. I need a hat to protect myself. So that was me just coming out of the lake, and that's why I was topless. You know, I uh, I'd been paddle boarding all day, and you know, I just got kind of worked up. And, and yeah, it was it was a thirst trap. <laughs> I uh, I would have made it look a bit less like a safari get up if i knew that was the impression but whatever man sometimes you gotta live a little dude safari maxing seems to work you've ensnared all these e-girls in your thirst trap with it you know maybe safari maxing is the way to go yep start a new trend all right and um i i also want to ask about you know you did mention that you're bald uh do you think that bald maxing has worked well for you in your uh and your escapades, do you think that that has provided you with more opportunity or was a, uh, you know, a non-chrome domed Sir Pings a lot, you know, more of a playa? What, what, what would you say works out for you with that? You know, when I had a full head of hair, I got a lot more action. I even modeled for Paul Mitchell at one point in the world at the uh, Boston World Trade Center. So, you know, like I, uh, I miss my hair, but what can I say? High T. You lose it faster. You got to make do with what you got. Right. You got to make the best of what you got. And the safari hat probably helps uh, accentuate that. Now, I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, it's been a blast. Unless you have anything else you'd like to get out there. Uh, I'm good. Thank you for having me on again. All right. And Spal.World coming soon to an internet near you. With that, peace out, my Grillo! Dance while I'm flossing in the whip. Uh, victory Royale, when that chopper hit. Mm. <laughs> Incrimination, I have no participation. News keep asking, I don't say shit. You can't have my conversation.